Um, this is kind of where we're headed. Uh, just like Rusty, I've done a whole bunch of sketches in preparation for today. Here's that layout that I mentioned earlier. Um, and there's a rough sketch of, of kind of a grill design. Um, but the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about the difference. So far, our main focus has been on a uh, two-point perspective. And so uh, just, let's just divide this page up. Let's fill this page. We'll fill this page up with these demos. And I'm kind of looking at the top right now. Um, you know, and, and just to refresh some of these things, if we've got this, I'm drawing really small, and this is a horizon line, and your vertical horizon. And so the way that we were, were taught um, two-point perspective is you've got these, the left vanishing point and the right vanishing point, and basically you draw you know, your objects uh, that vanish, and those lines converge towards one of those two vanishing points. Um, and there's no convergence up or down. So there's no foreshortening going up or down. It's quite simply uh, going to one of the, the two vanishing points. So what happens, though, if our object kind of comes over in this area? Uh, or if we want to draw something with a vanishing point that is in line with the object? So really quickly, and this is just kind of a review, um, there's no foreshortening going up or down on this object, but there is foreshortening going left and right towards those vanishing points. Um, and so we're kind of lying in that, in that two-point perspective. Obviously, it doesn't matter if it's left, right, up, or down. When we see an object, it's going to, the further away that it gets or the details get, the smaller they get. That foreshortening takes place regardless of your orientation. But in one point perspective, we even lie, we lie even more. So I'm just going to draw a square. And this is the start of a cube. And so this, that square sits over in this area relative to a vanishing point. And so I'm going to plot just a vanishing point above that square. And each of these corners of this, this square, I'm going to converge towards that singular vanishing point. And that is my convergence. That's where my foreshortening takes place. And I'm going to give that, that square a, a base, almost as if it's transparent. And then where it meets one of those converging lines, I'm going to draw straight up. And it's a little bit more difficult to see proportion when drawing in one point perspective, at least the depth, or at least I've found it difficult to see in the past. But that's one point perspective. I'd, and so the thing to note here, and if we think about three dimensions, in two point perspective, we have foreshortening taking place in two of those three dimensions, left, right, but not height. In one point perspective, we only have foreshortening taking place as it heads towards that singular vanishing point. And what that means is that uh, my x dimension and my z dimension, they do not foreshorten. And this, is, this can be kind of cool because as we've talked about in exploratory sketches, oftentimes we'll start with an orthographic view. But if you wanted to give that orthographic view some depth, you can use one point perspective. We'll do that in just a second. Before we, we do that, I just want to draw another square, and we're going to move this vanishing point just a little bit. So draw another just square, sides all equal. This again is the beginning of a cube, or we're going to draw kind of a hollow box. And on this one, let's just put a vanishing point somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be above. It doesn't have to be below. Your vanishing point could potentially be in the middle. And now from each of those corners, draw converging lines towards that center point. And as I said a minute ago, it's somewhat difficult to see the depth in one point perspective. Um, I'm going to draw that the back of this cube about right there. And again, I'm using the intersection points. On this one, let's uh, let's. 
as if this is a, a hollow box or a tube, let's just really heavily hatch the top surface as if we're looking inside of that. And maybe a little bit lighter value hatch on that left side. Again, kind of assuming a, a light source coming in from the top left. So what I mentioned a minute ago is that one of the cool things about One Point Perspective is you can start with an orthographic view. And so um, we're going to go back to something we drew very early in the, in the, the summer. And I'm going to draw the side view. Oops. Yeah, well, I'll do it this way. I'm going to draw the side view of the zigzag chair. Something about like that. Give it some depth. Excuse me, give it some material thickness. Put these little kind of support details in there. And now I'm going to pick a point somewhere behind my object uh, to be my single point perspective. And from all of these corners, from all of these important detail points, I'm going to draw a converging line that goes to that singular point. And now I have to do my, my best estimate, best guesstimate as to uh, how deep this chair should be. So I'm, I'm thinking about proportions. And I'm going to guess that the base of that chair is about that deep relative to uh, the other proportions. And what I can do um, is... I can actually carry that all the way over to here and that should be where the top of that thing meets there and I'll use that to continue to construct the proportions accurately of the rest of the the chair and the depth so I'll use those intersections and then where this one gets a little weird is right there because all of a sudden um, this chair, if that vanishing point sitting on a horizon line, if I'm kneeling down and looking at this chair, then that top line goes above that horizon line. And so it, it's, angled, it's angled slightly differently. If you want to use a straight edge to clean this up, as opposed to these quick gestures. I really do, one of the things that, that we noticed and we talked about last week was that a number of people still have some hairy lines. Uh, and so just practicing this technique, again, rotate your page, get it to that optimal angle, and then draw quick sketch gestures when you can. This is all made up of straight lines, so it's, it's appropriate for that. There is. There are two things. One is I can I actually have some, I need to add a detail there where that support comes in. But that's, that's one point perspective. Now, I did on uh, the demo page um, for Canvas, I did add some additional videos. Um, there's another one of a chair, but oftentimes in what we used to draw uh, was like a, a city um, looking down a street. Uh, one point perspective also comes into play if you were looking down some uh, railroad tracks. Uh, but I don't really want to spend too much time on one point perspective because I want to jump to three point perspective very quickly. I'll give you guys just a minute to catch up as I clean this up just a little bit. Are there any questions so far? That is somewhat of a review probably for most of you.
All right, so um, let's move on to three-point perspective. We've covered two. Uh, remember, on two-point perspective, you've got foreshortening happening in two of the three directions, but not in the, the up and down. One-point perspective, you've only got foreshortening happening towards that singular pers uh, point. Um, in three-point perspective, we're going to draw something that's, that's more realistic. We're not going to lie. There's still a little bit of a lie here, but we're not going to lie as much. And so um, I've, I've drawn a horizon line. And um, in the middle of that horizon line where our horizon would be, I'm going to put a vertical line. And so my eye is right there looking at an object. We're going to draw a, a cube. We're going to go back to some, some fundamentals. And so I'm going to draw a cube. I'm going to start it right here. This is my leading edge. Just like two-point perspective, my left and right converging lines will go to those the two vanishing points. My left and right vanishing point. But the difference is, we're looking, if this is the horizon line, we are below the horizon line. If we're below the horizon line, we're going to add a third point. And it's going to be down below my page, but it's going to be a third uh, vanishing point. And so I'm going to guess a little bit, but I'm going to put a line in there and notice how that's beginning to converge towards a point that would be somewhere about right, well, you can't see, somewhere about right here. And then since this is on the horizon line, it's at a 45 degree angle, I can come over here. My side should be about the same size. And my convergence should be equal going on the, the opposite side, going down towards this point here. And then from those corners, I'll again find my left and right vanishing point. Now there's one thing that I want to, I, I intentionally made a little bit of a mistake here. Um, that will come into play. Does anybody know maybe the mistake that I've made? How does the, the proportions of that cube look okay? But because I have foreshortening going in the negative Z direction, I actually need to make sure that this is small. This starts to get a little bit smaller. And so really, I want to I want to make that cube a little bit shorter because now all of a sudden this thing is foreshortening in this direction. And so just like with our three cube rules that we, we talked about all summer, um, I want to think about where my proportions, or at least the, the, the width or the, the height in this case, how those proportions are affected by that foreshortening. Um, and so the further away from that horizon line this cube gets, the shorter that leading edge needs to be, and ultimately the, the, the shorter this is. I may have exaggerated, probably this, this cube actually needs to be a, just a little bit taller, but hopefully that makes sense, and it'll come into play uh, when we start to look at uh, this next object. And so, if I'm drawing a series of cubes uh, within this same perspective grid that are all at 45 degrees, and I want to draw one over here. Let's draw one behind this one. My leading edge over here needs to be at that angle, or needs to be um, converging towards my third vanishing point. Instead of, instead of straight up and down, if I'm going to draw a cube over here, now this is going to look a little extort, distorted because my vanishing points are so close. But I'm just going to draw one more cube to emphasize what it is we're talking about. This line should also be converging towards that third vanishing point. So I've got convergence happening everywhere. And that's why this starts to get a little bit more complicated. And this cube on its own is going to look a little funky. This needs to converge. I actually think that needs to converge a little bit more.
Now, if I was just drawing this cube that's over here to the left, I would probably, and, and I didn't have to worry about this, I would probably start with a vertical line somewhere in the middle of that object. And then I'd observe the, the three cube rules uh, in addition to that. But that's page one. Does anybody have any questions? Maybe chime in on the chat if you do. Uh, hopefully this is fairly straightforward and you guys are pretty well versed that, that all this makes sense. I do really like this trick though. Uh, starting with an orthographic view and then giving it depth. One of the videos um, that, I, that I put on the, the demo page uh, takes a little bit more complicated um, chair and does the same thing from a side view. So uh, check that out if you're if you're really interested. Do you work well with flat objects that are flat on the front face, the other face of you? Mm -hmm. That's hard to turn a, a I guess a circular object that you're looking at. Oh, so I guess what I'll what I'll say, what, what you'll notice, so this is these three cubes are below the horizon line. Now the trick with three point perspective. If my object is below the horizon line, then my vanishing point should be below the objects. If my objects, on the other hand, are above the horizon line, that third vanishing point will be above the object. Well, you might be wondering, if you're, if you're really inquisitive, you might be wondering, well, what do you do if you're drawing something on the horizon line? And um, really, if we weren't going to lie, so if I had, uh, you don't need to worry about drawing this, but I just want to communicate it real quick. If I had a perspective grid that was like this, and I wanted to draw a cube or an object um, on the horizon line, or, or what really is happening is, is we have our perception the way we see things is we actually see them not with the straight lines. And, and uh, if you walk up really close to a corner, I used to have students go into Wallace and look, walk straight up, look straight ahead at the corner of uh, a tall corner in a building. And you can actually begin to perceive something that we typically don't perceive. And that is that there is, it's, it's kind of like a fisheye. Um, and so if we were to draw... Uh, if we were to draw things really how we perceive them, we would pick up on this. And in fact, you'll see that if you, uh, if you use like the panorama feature of your camera and you, you were to scan the front of Wallace Hall, for example, or whatever, you'll notice that this is what happens, right? So if you're looking at the front of a building and you do a panoramic view of it, what happens? It gets really tall in the middle and then it foreshortens out to the sides. So um, I just wanted to communicate that. Most of the things that we draw in industrial design, however, are going to be below the, I say this, are probably going to be below the horizon line. Um, and, uh, and so you would just need to worry about that singular vanishing point. Actually, you know, it's sitting right here. I've got this, this interesting how to draw book by Scott Robertson and somewhere in here he's got this bubble perspective thing going on that I'll just share with you real quick. I'm trying to find a, uh, an example might be if you're looking at a reflection of a tower like in a lake or something and uh, basically the lake's going to be pretty close to the horizon line. Uh, compared relative to your tower, you'll see you'll see the reflect you'll see it foreshortening towards the sky above in the sky and then towards the center of the earth in the lake. Yeah, you can start to see it. You can really start to see it in these images right here, which were taken probably with a fisheye lens, which basically is like really zooming in. And then you'll see some examples of some drawings that incorporate uh, that idea into it. Whereas these are not curved surfaces. Um, they're straight, but the idea is that uh, I'm, I'm trying to enhance them with this third point perspective. Or I guess it's four point perspective in that instance. All right, so 
Um, let's draw a grill. Rusty, I know, I know that you've had uh, a number of things in, in your career that you really, that they were, they were kind of like your babies, uh, things that you've designed. Um, my two are the guitar for Gibson that never made it to production. And then the other one is this grill, which I, um, uh, there's a whole long story related to big box retail and, uh, and reasons why this didn't make it in production, but I just, I really wanted this grill. Um, and I wanted to, to see it happen. So I'm gonna draw a grill. We're gonna do a, a couple of things with this grill. And in fact, I, I want, I do want to maybe uh, reinforce something that I saw uh, that that people, we, we talked about it with the face mask. We talked about it with uh, the sunglasses this summer. We talked about it with the face. There were a few faces, and I'll just I'll just kind of really quickly tell you about this. A few faces when or heads when somebody drew one in perspective a little bit, where uh, where the nose is supposed to be, you know, in between these two, drawing it in perspective. And I still saw some people that would still put the nose over here and then the eye here and the eye here. And that just was a little awkward. And so if we remember those rules about curved surfaces, right? Like the sunglasses sit on a curved surface and we don't need to do the full construction anymore. We should understand that this accelerates as it rolls back. And in fact, I brought in a... Uh, yeah, I certainly did. I brought in a visual aid that can help us with this. Um, those surfaces, if it's bulged out towards us, those surfaces should accelerate just like this French curve accelerates as it goes back. And then the other thing to keep in mind if you're doing something like this is that the center line of this surface is going to be biased over towards the left side. So we're gonna work on that and three-point perspective today with this, this demo on this grill. Um, and I sometimes forget I'm drawing in three-point perspective. If I do that, forgive me. I'll try also to rotate my page in a way that it makes sense that you can see that convergence. Um, but I'm gonna start out in the middle of the page. I'm gonna draw a leading edge. This will be kind of the, the, the leading edge of the body of the grill. And then I'm going to just begin to establish my perspective. I've got a little bit uh, deeper angle over here and a little bit shallower um, because I want to show off that curve. I want to I want to exaggerate what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start by just kind of drawing in the main body of the grill. And so because we're in three point perspective, notice that this. I started that leading edge, it was straight up down, straight up and down and vertical. But this this back edge, or yeah, the back edge of that, I'm gonna draw in um, with that convergence coming down towards the third vanishing point below my object. And I'll do the same thing over here. There's not a lot of convergence with this one, right? So um, one of the things to think about, just like we talked about with two-point perspective, the closer I am to an object, the more convergence will take place. Um, and so the closer I would get to this grill, if I'm looking further down, then I'd have more convergence coming down towards this bottom vanishing point. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to say that the lid will start, the lid of this grill is going to start somewhere about right here. I'm just, I'm really just working on the perspective right now. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit more. Um, and establishing that perspective. Uh, but at this point, and I am gonna do a little bit of construction here. So I'm gonna find the midpoint of that front surface. And along this, a vanishing line coming this way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow this front surface out. A couple of other things to keep in mind, and this, this is a reminder, but this is just one of those things that it seems like it takes students a while to get to. I'm going to put a line going towards the left vanishing point right there. 
Um, and I'm going to come through that line. I'm going to come through that point tangent to that line. So as I build in this curve, I want to think about that curve coming tangent here and accelerating as it comes back around to that other side. Uh, Luke, the, the TA in the studio, mentioned something to me uh, or, or noticed something. The way he thinks about this is that if this was a part of a really large ellipse, then this would be a chord, like how we would check a chord. And so it needs to look kind of like a chord. It needs to look like those are two equal slices of pizza or crazy bread. I'm going to carry that point down to here, and I'm going to bring this forward. I'm actually going to draw in this little rectangle. Because my curve, it will be very similar. And in fact, if I take my, when I used to draw with this a lot, this is my curve. My curve up here is uh, it's accelerating as it rolls around. I can see that it's coming through tangent right there. Um, I'm going to draw this in a little bit darker. I can use almost that same part of this, this, uh, this uh, French curve, find that midpoint, and draw in another curve. It's almost the same curve when I move up and down. Um, it's just that's just one way to, to, to think of it um, this is gonna be my handle so this is where my lid starts uh, I need to give it um, some thickness for that handle so whereas I used my tool a minute ago I'm just I'm just lightly freehanding that in this is gonna be the thickness and then uh, from there I'm gonna put a, a curve into this lid. I'm going to take that same curve just like I did with this. I'm thinking about that same curve. This one isn't necessarily a pure arc. It kind of fits. It's one of the natural curves that I draw with my wrist. But I'm notice what I'm going to do with my paper. There's convergence even along that curve. And so what I've done is I've drawn that curve in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my paper over and notice that I'm angling it just a little bit. So I'll do that again. I'm gonna, I drew that curve. I'm basically going to try and repeat the same curve. And so I'm just going to move my paper over and I, and I twisted it just a little bit. It looks like I twisted it too much. And I'm going to repeat that same curve. I'm actually going to do it right here in the middle as well, which would be a little bit shallower curve not quite as much and then I'm going to draw that top surface over hey Jared, can I ask a question Jared? yeah do you have an image of the what maybe you showed it now? yeah 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 I can show you kind of where we're headed although I made a huge mistake right here gotcha I think that'll help us kind of help me see kind of what, why you're making the lines you're making okay but yeah we're headed towards something like this yeah yeah um now below my handle, I've got a control panel. So I'm going to step down just a little bit. Again, I'm basically drawing this same original curve that I had in there. It's still accelerating as it goes back. Um, all I've done is I've angled that, just like we did with this top one. I almost feel like I've still I've drawn in too much of a convergence up here on the top. But that's my control panel. I've got another, that same curve, but I'm not going to draw it all the way across. This will be where my control panel starts, and that's actually where the handle will start. And so I did not do any kind of construction, but one of the things that I want everybody to see here is this width. And I've tried to show that same width on the opposite side, but notice how thin it got. And I'm using, visually, I'm kind of using that center line to help me with that width. And so what we're going to do, this, this, is, this was my favorite part of this design. Um, I'm going to segment off this lid at those points. So I've just, I've kind of got, we, we talked last week about, you know, how do things align with one another? Um, 
We've talked about you know proportions and uh, implied lines and all these different things in studio. I'm letting this control panel line up with where this part breaks. Um, this is maybe a little too much information, but ultimately, what this is is this is a this is a a die cast end cap, and then uh, in between those two end caps, there'll be a sheet metal component. Uh, both a handle, well that's a bar, and a sheet metal component that would make up the rest of the grill lid. Um, and so I'm going to draw in, uh, what I need to do, I need to actually add, and this is where, you know, moving back and forth between uh, tools and freehand, I know that this line is one that I'm going to use, so I'm going to darken that in. And then um, moving over here, I'm going to make this as dark, but there's going to be a step. And this is kind of the, the one of the things that we wanted to continue to talk about this week is details. So how parts might come together and, and the details surrounding the knob or um, other features of your design that may come through as you do your exploratory sketches and you do your own grill. But I've got a step in there where that, that sheet metal would actually go to the inside and made up uh, and be bolted to the underside of this, um, this die cast component. And so uh, you might notice that I've, I've drawn an arc here. Just like that other one, it's, it's a bulge and it's going back and it would ultimately uh, accelerate as it moves around this way. So one of the other things I just want to emphasize this week and I want us to get right is when you draw curves make sure they're accelerating in the right direction. And that also works with you know kind of what we're doing in uh, in studio where we're, you're, you're, you're building curves out of wire and this would this would kind of be like one of those supportive or trajectory curves that we talked about in studio. Now the other thing that I want to do here is instead of having a very sharp edge on the top of that lid, I want to give it a fillet. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it about an inch and a half fillet. I'm gonna define it up here at the top. And then I'll use the beginning and the end of that fillet to draw in that fillet. And hopefully that original construction edge that I put in there will somewhat disappear. This is going to be a pretty crisp edge, and so that'll roll around. This will roll around, but my fillet will transition down into a fillet here. And in fact, um, I'm going to use that fillet all the way to the bottom of this grill. So I'm going to take that fillet. Now notice how I'm, I'm, I went ahead and grabbed my tool again, so I'm moving back and forth. And that fillet at the base of this grill will, will be there as well. Um, I want some fillets here, so where this control panel, this will be like an angled recess. Let me show you that on this. That control panel, this will be an angled recess where the, the, um, the knobs will actually go. Um, here I've drawn it fairly crisp, but I actually want to draw it with a fillet here and draw up at about a 45 degree angle. Um, you don't know this yet, but it's fairly, it's a fairly easy manufacturing process to put, uh, to form a piece of sheet metal in this manner, but I'm going to put a, a fillet there and then that sheet metal is going to come straight down. And ultimately those surfaces will meet up behind my handle. And then up here, I'm going to draw a straight line. Should be converging with everything. I'm going to draw a straight line that'll show that that sheet metal is flat right there. Um, while I've got my ruler, I'm going to go ahead and darken in some of this, some of these lines on the opposite side. One thing to note here is. Remember, we're kind of seeing a lot of, of this side, but that um, detail and that uh, 
die cast component, we don't see much thickness there. And in fact, we're probably not going to see any of that fillet as it rolls around. We might see just a little bit, but it's so insignificant that I don't even feel like I need to draw it. This fillet on the opposite side would be rolling away from us and we probably wouldn't see it. Um, and in fact, the fillet that's on, that runs all the way down to the base of this object, of this grill, we're not going to see that either. As I draw this line in, I want to, I want to, just as we did with the Rubik's Cube this summer and some other things, I'm just going to leave a small little gap right there that will help the reader kind of see that there's, that's, those are some parting lines or that's, that's where two parts come together. Now I want to give this thing, uh, and this is where I may have put too much of a bulge in this, uh, a contour in the front, but I want to give it some side shelves or at least one. And I'm going to put that side shelf and I'm going to start it right at the end of this fillet. And I want to, again, thinking about how some things might line up, I want that shelf to be about this tall. I'll, I'll darken in where that gap would be. I want that shelf to be about that tall uh, when it comes in. I guess I could actually, we can make these shelves come out straight. That might be interesting. No, let's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that curvature that I, that I used earlier. And I actually want to continue to use that curvature. It's still accelerating as it rolls around. I want to put that curve on the top of the shelf. As it comes, whoops. I want it to be right here. So this thing is still accelerating. I'll carry that over to the back side as well. And so this is curving a whole lot and we may not see, this is going to look a little awkward. Um, I have to guesstimate how far that is. I mean, I could, I could do a construction. I could actually draw a rectangle in here and I could do the Y, the, the, the diagonal method and carry that over to there, but I think we're probably getting to the point that we've had enough training that we don't necessarily have to do that. And so my shelf, I'm looking, I'm referencing my converging lines, my vanishing lines. My shelf is going to be shaped something like that right there. And um, instead of that shelf coming all the way over, that's pretty thick. It's like a, a little bit of a waste of material. I'm going to go from a thickness that's about this thick here to maybe something that isn't quite as thick out here on the edge. And now what I can do is, is I'm referencing this curve and I'm basically going to put a straight angle in there and put that curve, almost take that same curve and put it at just at, a, at an angle to where it's a little bit larger, longer. All right, I'll give you guys just a minute to catch up. Rusty, am I missing anything? I don't like this this line I put in on accident. Although we could use that as like a fillet. You're drawing. I'd say you're drawing this just all the students as you know. You've already you've already fully explored this concept, so you probably you know at this point in time, an equivalent for you for the students would have been they've probably done several exploratory sketches all about this design. Right. Yeah, I'm getting real detailed. This might be your 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 rendering. But I do want to I do want to continue to walk you through and reinforce some constructions. The time, the detail level, and the, the, the previous the prior knowledge he has and what he wants to do would be an equivalent of your final rendering. It's good. Yeah, I've drawn this grill like at least a hundred times I'm sure or or something very similar in both detail and proportion uh, the thing that I, the other thing that I really liked about this grill was this this cantilever detail I'm about to put in so um, the fascia 
What's that? It's similar, but a little bit more complex version of grill we drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is the true version, not the straight edge, the straight line version. Right. I'd say this is the kind of effort you all want to put into your final your final concept drawing, rendering uh, every week. That, that curve that I just drew in there, and this curve, and this curve, you see how they're all related. They're almost all the same curve that is doing that. And it is so subtle. Like, until you train your eye, you may not recognize that there is a an acceleration as this curve moves around the grill. But when you don't put it in there, it looks awkward. But it's not, they're not parallel. They're, they're starting and stopping at the proper points along the line that's vanishing to the left vanishing point. Right. So now I need to give this, this shelf some thickness over here. Look at even the, the that curved surface actually rolls around and disappears. Um, but I, I want to get to about that thickness. There's still a curve and this is the accelerated part of that curve. But the bottom of that shelf would roll up. And in fact, since I'm in three point perspective, you know what Rusty, this is what I've forgotten. That needs to be angled, this needs to be angled, this needs to be angled, and converging towards that bottom vanishing point. And in fact, that curve that I just put in there, I'm going to cheat it a little bit and make it a little bit larger um, to get the three-point perspective. Um, let's see. So... Uh, my my and and this is kind of the details too. So my handle is going to be inset just a little bit, just like that sheet metal. And so if I zoom in right here, that handle will not go flush with that detail. It actually comes in, and this is just going to be some bent bar stock. And my curve will be just offset from the original curve that I drew in there. And in fact, I'll, I'll use this just to make sure. I just feel like the curve on this is so important to get right. that I'll use my tool. Um, this would be a darker edge because I'd only see four legs of the spider. This is rolling around. You can see that angle right there. Um, this front control panel, again, this is, this is because I'm so familiar with this object, it would be plastic as opposed to sheet metal. But there would be, I would see the bottom of that fascia shield, and then I'd see the top edge, just right there, of that next, um, of the sheet metal part. And then this would roll around with a fillet. Uh, while I'm doing this, let me, let me point out just a couple of things. We've, we've talked about fillets in the past. Um, but I want to point out something since this is this is demo time um, If we think about that Fillet being basically it's a quarter of an ellipse, right? The fillet would be Let me draw a better ellipse Would be this part of that ellipse if I'm drawing a fillet over on this side, and so this is the, the, the kind of, it's the flatter part of the ellipse, it's the slower part of the ellipse. Over here, it's like the faster part of the ellipse. And so if I'm drawing a fillet over here, it's gonna be real tight. If I'm drawing a fillet right here, it's gonna be the slower part. And that's just something to keep in mind. I almost wouldn't even see the fillet if this was a, a, a corner it's so shallow right there 
that I almost don't even see it as part of the fillet, but it's pretty tight over on this side. Let's see, there's gonna be a step back to this, and this, this is another place where there's a little fillet. This fillet would be, well, I guess it would actually be somewhere about right here. It'd be that portion of this ellipse as it rolls around and goes back. Let's see, the last thing that I need to do, I think on this drawing, I'm looking, I'm referencing my left vanishing lines. I need to create a break between the lid and that, that um, front panel. Remember, this is flat right here, so this is the, the weird part, so. It's gonna be flat right there. And just like with this, I would actually see, you know, two, actually see two little lines, let's see. The, the bottom of this sheet metal, and I'd see the top of uh, the control panel. All right, that's about all I'm gonna do on this, um, but I am gonna just quickly throw some marker on it because it's interesting how marker shows up. I do need to do, you know what? There's something else I wanna do. I wanna, I wanna start to describe um, the knobs. Oh, I actually want to put a handle out here too. Um, so I'm going to break in to the edge here. I'm going to take a notch out. I feel like that maybe I missed my convergence just a little bit. I'm going to take a notch out. Put a handle and basically like a hook over here. Uh, if I was going to put a fillet in there, again, I'm going to reference what part of the ellipse that would be. Um, but right here, I'm just going to step in with the same bar stock, trying to create some, some visual dialogue on my design. The same bar stock would be over here. I'll clean that up a little bit later. I can carry that over to the other side if this was symmetrical. So that step in would be about right there. And my bar stock would be about right there. I guess I can zoom out. Um, one last thing that I think well, I, before I do the knobs, this is going to help me. We talk about contour lines and section lines. This isn't really a contour line, but it is a section line. I'm going to make this a little bit darker, show that it steps in right there, come up, and then show that angle and how that angle is going to come up and it actually comes up like this. And then that comes up to there and it rolls over to show um, a couple of things. One is what you may notice here, if we look real closely, by putting those section lines in there, I've really helped the viewer see how much room there is for the handle, for you to lift that up. And what you may also notice as I did that is that most of those lines I had actually already drawn in. They were part of my construction. I'm just reinforcing them. So, if we're down here in this control panel area, I almost feel like I've, I've put that center line a little too far over to the right. We've talked about drawing ellipses um, with uh, minor axes and then checking the chord. What I want to do here is I actually want to draw in what I think is a square surface, and I'll do that same thing right here. What feels like a square surface to me. One of the other things that I know about ellipse is I've got my angle, the, the minor axis is coming up at an angle like that. But the other thing that I know about ellipse is it hits a square Excuse surface. Excuse me, Matt, or maybe... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will hit a square surface tangent at the midpoints of those square surface. So I'm actually just going to lightly draw in an ellipse. I'm going to take that same ellipse. My center point was somewhere about right here. I'm going to step that center point up and I'm going to draw another ellipse because... What I'm, and it's a little bit smaller. 
And my goal here is to draw something that would be like a chamfered, a chamfered detail heading into those knobs. And that's getting real small. You can see how small that is. This is the reason why when I talk about um, when I talked about uh, the layout and what we're looking for is that may be a good area to drop in a detail of what that knob looks like. You know, I've actually I kind of looked at what this might do in a section view here. I also drew, you know, what I think that knob should look like there. I haven't quite finished that rendering. But my handle's kind of covering that up, and so it's a good place to, if I was doing this as my final rendering, to, to put out a detail, to, to call it out as a, a very special, important detail moving forward. Um, let's see what I can finish here. I think that's everything that I want to do. I'd like for this to have a little bit of marker on it. So I'm going to put some marker on it in just a second. Uh, I'd see a break between material out here. Um, I would need to clean up. If this was my final rendering, I would still need to apply a little bit more of the three-line three weight. But also notice how the, the original constructions almost disappeared. All right, so simple marker. This thing's gray. Uh, how dark is this? That's pretty dark. I'm going to make um, these details a darker gray. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, there, the firebox... I'm going to make that a darker gray. Um, that front handle. I'll make it a darker gray. Um, I'm not too concerned with, with the value of, of those details, but I am going to be very concerned as I put this lighter gray on there. And what I want to do is I basically, I just want to use the right side surfaces to help me define what's going on with this. And so what I want you to pay attention just for a second with how little definition there is in the form. I mean, you can, if you read all the line work, you can get it. But, but I want you to notice how much like the form starts to pop out just by adding a little bit of marker. I can add a little bit right there so you, you really start to see that there's a step in that surface. It's going to help me read this surface, that there's a step in right there. I almost feel like I should make that the darker gray too. And notice that I also I stopped before I got to that fillet that runs up and down this object. Um, maybe to show off some extra, I, I actually wish I had a lighter gray, but I don't. Um, I almost feel like putting a little bit of a contour or showing some of the contour. I'm just going to draw in kind of a, a, a couple of quick gestures that maybe makes this look like it's it's got some shininess to it, some gloss to it. Uh, I don't want to do anything on the top. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. But I can come back in with this darker gray and I can add some value to the right side surfaces. So basically I'm just going over that a second time. You know what? I'm going to make this darker gray. And in a second I'll come back and hit this back, this the side surface one more time. Um, once it dries, I can hit this. And maybe, 
you know where I've got those those little recesses or the, the part splits I could potentially come back in make those pop just a little bit and there that's it um, so as I said we want you I, I this is not a complete rendering I would need to come back in and uh, use my flare tip and add some some heavier line weight which I did on this one uh, maybe a razor point um, this one I think from this angle I actually might see where the tank would be I could put something in there you'll notice on this I put in like a uh, this is this will weight the the tank um, I put a couple of accessories in here to show how this might work so um, certainly think about context your goal will be to take the same design so you're this week you'll explore uh, a whole bunch of grill designs um, if you want to do a smoker that's certainly fine as opposed to a grill um, I will tell you that gas grills have a little bit more detail so it might be a cooler sketch because you might need to put in your control knobs um, maybe a, a, a tank weight um, some other things but your goal is to take that same design and, and view it uh, from a couple of different views. Again, those views are described in the assignment. Um, and this is just an example. Feel free. I mean, I've, I've got one that's a little bit larger than the other. If your grills were the same size, I think that, that would be fine. Uh, just consider the visual hierarchy. If you wanted to rotate one so that they're facing each other, that may be a, a good way to go. Um, but that's this week's assignment. Rusty, you got anything else?